Afternoon and welcome to yet another great conversation this afternoon. We are live from NTV, Uganda Kampala Senate Conference Center. I'm Andrew Chamagiro, and today we are discussing the International Day of uh, Democracy. Now, just to bring you to speed, in 2007, the United Nations Assembly resolved to observe the 15th day of September as the International Day of Democracy with the purpose of promoting and upholding the principles of democracy around the globe and to those signatory to the United Nation. Now it's dedicated to reviewing the state of democracy around the world and to encourage governments and democratic institutions to promote peace, freedom and human rights. Now for me to bring this conversation up close and more to you with me in studios I have um, Ms. Ruth Sachindi, the Director of Monitoring and Inspections from the Uganda Human Rights Commission. I have uh, Kigongo Robert from the Sustainable Development Catalyst. It's a youth coalition for the SDGs. And finally I have Mr. Leonard Mlekwa, the Director of Operation from Electoral Commission. Now the hashtag is uh, EC underscore score IDD 2021. So you want to be a part of that conversation on Twitter and beyond. We'll go by that and then the conversation will start. Good afternoon, my great panel. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Um, uh, I'm very excited, especially when I saw Mr. Chindi on this panel, <laughs> when it gets to human rights, <laughs> to where we, we are. When you look at this kind of day, it was uh, key of the agenda was to see that um, human rights um, are encouraged around the globe and to protect. Um, Mr. Chindi, when you look at the current human rights of our country, where do we stand? What's, what's our level of human rights like? Um, thank you. It's always a pleasure to be here. Mm. But when we talk about human rights and the state of human rights in a country, mm. you never have one answer. Mm -hmm. You have to look at a particular thematic area mm. or human rights issue mm. to ask what is the status of this issue. Because mm. when you make it so broad, we, are, we have performed exceedingly well in certain as aspects as mm. a country mm. and in others we have fallen short mm. so uh, when we say uh, the state of human rights we it is very broad because mm. then you look at issues of democracy mm. issues of rule of law issues of torture cruel mm. inhuman or degree let's treatment. look at democracy what when we look at yes. democracy okay i mm. mentioned m democracy because w w it's that's the conversation well, yeah <laughs> so um when it, it comes to democracy, we, we have to go back to what democracy is. Mm. Uh, I, I know my, my colleague Molekwa will speak to that as mm. well. But uh, briefly speaking, it is the rule for the people, where the people participate, mm -hmm. for the people, by the people. Mm. So it is more inclusion into persons being able to decide mm. how they are governed mm. and who governs them. And also, usually, it also goes into the rule of law. Then the rule of law is to ensure uh, to where you oversee how the people who hold the power use the power. Mm -hmm. And that becomes the rule of law. So uh, when we talk about democracy in Uganda, I think we have achieved so much. Okay. We have held, we, held, we hold free, f free and regular elections. Mm. And you can call them fair mm. every five years. Uh, we have our representatives in Parliament mm -hmm. and through our representatives we we anticipate that they make decisions based on the needs and the aspirations people. of the society mm. so uh, democracy is very important because it informs issues of peace and security mm. it brings about accountability uh, through democracy people are able to determine how they're supposed to be governed and who governs them mm. through democracy they're able to bring down the people that they don't need it brings mm. down bad governance and promotes good governance mm. it's it breeds a participation because every person gets to participate mm. whether you're poor or rich whether um, uh, you're a person with disabilities from all walks of life you get to determine who governs you and how you govern and that is very important mm. so democracy basically promotes development because if we are not at war like some countries then we can work and we can have economic growth so democracy either is a fundamental right mm. because it has other resultant right mm. it informs 
uh, the right to freedom of expression because you can't have democracy unless people can speak. Mm. Freedom of opinion, freedom of con uh, conscience. It informs freedom of movement, freedom from torture, cruel and human degrading treatment, <coughs> mm. and other rights that, uh, you know, the right to education. All those come from a democratic society. Where you, fail, you fall short of democracy, then every other entitlement is of freedom breaks down. Thank you so much. Uh, coming to Mr. Mlekwa uh, from Electoral Commission, as EC, now you're here as EC because uh, that is the capacity I'll, I'll run with you the same way I saw Mr. Chinji there. Um, what is democracy, especially you as an institution that runs um, elections in this country? Uh, democracy, as my colleague said, one is important mm. because it's about participation, as you see, the principles of democracy, mm. about participation, mm -hmm. equality, uh, that all people part must participate, mm. those who are supposed to participate. In our mm. case, all eligible citizens mm. must participate. And they exercise equality. Mm. Because whether I even the sitting leaders who are elected, when it comes to elections, in terms of voting, Mm. They are equal to the ordinary voter. Yep. It's equality. Those are the major principles. And it's about having everybody mm. taking part. Mm. Now, that's very, very important. And when it comes to our situation in Uganda, we have been practicing a number of these activities. Mm. And it's why uh, people tend to look at democracy as elections. Mm. No. Elections is only a component of democracy. democracy. Issues of accountability. Issues of service delivery, mm -hmm. issues of human rights, as she has raised. Mm. All these are very important components in a democracy. Failure to achieve any of them, you cannot have complete democracy. Mm. And as it is in line with our theme, we are looking at why stronger partnerships. Mm -hmm. Because no single entity, no single organization can succeed in a, a democracy without the rest. Unless you have a partnership, that's when you can uh, achieve mm. a lot. Take, for example, just one component of elections. Electoral Commission, as the managers of elections, if we are left alone, mm -hmm. we, we cannot conduct we so successfully. Mm -hmm. Leave alone free and fair, but even succeed in conducting an electoral activity, we can't. Mm. For example, remove media from elections. How will the population know? We don't have what to disseminate there is exactly that. if the political parties don't present candidates mm. can you have an election you can't you can't and that's why we're emphasizing the need for partnerships if we have to achieve and if we have to support the growth of democracy in our country mm. we need to realize that all players must come together mm -hmm. and we build a partnership so that we're able to achieve even much more and that's the only way we can achieve the democracy. Because democracy controls so many things of mm. daily life. Some people may not even be aware. It does. Service delivery alone is part of uh, democracy. Mm. It's also part of human rights. I'm entitled to health care. Mm. But the provision of health care can determine a democracy or not. Education. Mm. Uh, we are now talking about, that's why you see uh, governments take measures to protect the population from COVID mm. because it's a responsibility of government to provide care Which and security. Which through a democratic, uh, uh, a democratic oh. election. Oh, yes. So all these components and no one can succeed minus the others. Mm. And that's why even government as one player cannot succeed mm. minus the other players within this partnership. Thank you so much. Uh, coming to you, Chigongo Robert. Here. Given that you, the youth, are monitoring this at the Catalyst, you're monitoring the performance of the country in terms of uh, human rights, in terms of democracy, in terms of the SDGs, how are we competing regionally and on the continental scale? Uh, thank you very much. Mm. The International Day of Democracy happens at a time when trust in public authorities mm. is down. Anxiety is very high. Mm. Injustices have gone unaddressed. Mm. Crises, crises have, big, have gone. And what do you mean injustices have gone unattended to? You see me, I'm a journalist here. I, ne <laughs> I need facts and figures. As young people, mm. 
Uh, we've just come from uh, an election yeah. where a majority of my fellow brothers and sisters mm. who have dissent, dissenting views mm. uh, still are mm. still in jails. Mm -hmm. And SDG 16 mm. is about peace, justice, and strong institutions. Yeah. I want to remind everybody that democracy is the bedrock for peace, justice for all, mm -hmm. and strong institutions. Like Electoral Commission, nice. it's one of the strong institutions. Mm. SDG 16 targets are made to protect democratic institutions. Mm. This include electoral bodies, mm. political parties, mm. so that they can deliver democracy to society. And their mandate. And mm. their mandate mm. to societies. So literally, the youth coalition Share. No, 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 no. Don't go fast, Chigongo. You say the injustices that have not been addressed, the ones you've alluded to that they're still in jail, have they been in courts of law? Have courts listened to them? Have, they, have these cases just been adjourned? Have they just not been in any public space where justice is not being given? That's, that's what I want to understand then. Uh, we have a situation whereby mm. the Electoral Commission has delivered an election, mm. meaning... Uh, it's everybody is invited to come and and be a part of it and be part of it, mm. which means it takes two to tango. Mm. As you all know, young people have been on front lines and in the hard lines. I don't know. You tell me. Rightly them. demanding a role mm. in shaping their own future. Mm -hmm. You can't reclaim a future when you are not one of them. So they are stepping up. W which ones? The youth. The young people. Okay. Generally. Mm. They are stepping up mm. to reclaim the space. Mm. Democracy means embracing meaningful participation, mm. bringing together all groups that have been traditionally excluded, the women, mm. young people, journalists, mm. human rights defenders, mm. and everybody, especially mm. in the communities. Mm. We are talking of equal suffrage. Mm. So young people deserve equal suffrage, just like other people. Yeah. I literally, I want to appreciate the current government through the Electoral Commission and other bodies. They've been able to deliver an election during a pandemic. Yeah. Though COVID-19 pandemic has also been used to abuse democracy. How, in many friend? countries, not just in Uganda. How, my friend? Now this is getting interesting. <laughs> how how, have the, how has it been used? Uh, you have guidelines mm. delivered by Minister of Health. Of course. Safety but being all. applied selectively, mm. that's an area of contention. They mm. should apply to everybody. Mm. We came from the NRM primaries mm. where it was by lining up. Mm. And of course, some applied SOPs, others didn't. Mm. So this set a precedent to the general election. How so what followed in the general, what happened in the general election? Mm was a precedent of what happened in the NRM mm. preliminaries. Uh -huh. So, but we saw quite a lot of challenges mm. in applying these guidelines. Mm. They were applied selectively. Mm. You, you, you all know that civic space has been cramped down and democracy cannot survive later on mm. flourish in absence of civic space. So uh, Mr. Chigongo, if I'm to understand it, so what do we have in Uganda in the absence of democracy? Do we have something, a look-alike of democracy? Or from your school of thought, is it double-edged that it, democracy depends on where your lenses are looking? We have democracy in mm. Uganda, but there's a lot to improve on. To avoid future crises, mm. we may be very comfortable mm. right now for the quick wins that we have, mm. but in order to avoid future crises, we must address mm. the concerns within the democracy. You all know that human rights, the link between democracy and human rights mm -hmm. is declared in Article 21, Clause 3, mm. in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Absolutely. Meaning you must have human rights human dignity mm. must be respected for you to have a flourishing democracy mm. answering your question in Uganda we have democracy mm. but I, as i told you 
we have to improve. No country has perfect democracy. Absolutely, yes. Uh, our mother of democracy, mm -hmm. which is the United States, has just Still gone has through issues. some democratic challenges. Their president contended the election. He said it wasn't fair. So mm. Uganda, back to Uganda, mm. we are also a statistic mm. to countries that have failed to deliver perfect democracy. Mm. But nowhere in the world there is perfect democracy. Yeah. But we must improve. continue to mm. improve. Mm. And quoting the Secretary General of the United Nations, mm. Governments all over the world must listen to people who are demanding change. Mm -hmm. They must create meaningful dialogues. Mm. Uh, I'm glad that the Electoral Commission mm. has what we call the National Consultative Forum, which is a statutory mm. and a parliament. We also have iPod, yeah. but iPod has become <laughs> For lack of a better word. For lack of a better <laughs> word. <laughs> so, we should create safe spaces for dialogue. Okay. And we should accept these views. And work on to improve. Uganda is here. Mm. Uganda has been here for many years. Yeah. We still want to be here. Mm. Everybody has to live in his country mm. peacefully. There is a fear for change, meaning... Uh, it's fear from who? To who? From everybody, from the citizens. You're scared especially. about something in this country? Share unless, what you're scared Unless of. you close your eyes to the facts. I'm a journalist. My lenses see quite a lot. But you see, when we're having unless this conversation, you it's a word <laughs> against you. Unless you close your eyes to the facts, yeah. but you all know that there is fear for change. Okay. Uh, people participate in elections for different reasons. Mm. Others do come to deliver mm. their voices. Others want change. Mm. Others want the status quo. Okay. So those who want the status quo would fear change. And ones who want change? I earlier noticed about the future crises. Mm. You have businesses in Chikubo. A Chikubo mm. person would be worried. What if we have a tornado, an explosion? Mm. Of a revolution. Where will my <laughs> business be? Yes. What about the circuit I've put up? Mm. What about the mansions I own mm. from money I've attained from? Mm dubious means. Mm. So that's where the fear comes from. Okay. Uh, Ruth Sachindi, you're, you're in the human rights. Robert here alludes that uh, many youths during the elections were arrested and they have not received justice yet and they're still in prison. Um, again, he says that uh, the, we don't have enough spaces for the youths to actually exercise and, you know, flourish with regards to their rights and, and all that. As an entity of uh, Uganda Human Rights Commission, how true is this? Because you said, as a country performing well democratically, the youth here is saying, unless you close your eyes to the reality that is befalling our country, it's bad. What is bad? The democracy. <coughs> you say that we're doing okay. good. Okay. Um, democracy is dynamic. Mm -hmm. It is dynamic in every society. Mm -hmm. And because it's dynamic, states or countries or governments have mm. to build democracies mm -hmm. regularly. Mm. They have to strengthen democracies and they have to preserve democracies. Mm. So you can't sit as a state and say, okay, we are a democratic state. Mm. You have to work at it mm -hmm. in ensuring that uh, you do what is required, everything that we've talked about the respect, ensuring that there is participation, mm. non-discrimination, uh, non issues of respect for the rule of law, mm. and uh, accountability, and all those variables we've discussed. Mm. So my friend uh, says uh, there isn't enough space for the youth. Mm. But I think in every democratic society, it is a creation of an environment for people to thrive, mm. where there's security for all, mm. where there are equal opportunities for all, where we ensure that p uh, 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 um, my, my, my colleague, uh, Mr. Muleko, has talked about opportunities mm. and services, mm. where we educate our youth, we empower our youth, mm -hmm. we skill our youth. Mm -hmm. And I think the youth also, when we talk about rights, it goes hand in hand with duties and responsibilities. So the youth also have to up their act and know what 
is good for them. Mm. It is very easy for us to tell the state, do this. And I think the state has played its role mm. in having youth livelihoods, in having Emioga, mm. uh, Operation Wealth Creation, Bonava Gawale, mm. and many others. You have seen people, the youth being given cows, mm. goats, piglets, coffee cotton, and many others. Mm. Now, the government will say we have played our role. But how responsive and how responsible are our youth? Mm. I think it was on NTV where we did an evaluation of where this money has gone, mm. where the youth who were facilitated, how far have they utilized yes, these resources? Mm. We found that every time they got a million or two or ten millions, they divided it among themselves, went and married off, or uh, you know, <laughs> went and bought the border. nearest border border yeah. and just went and merry, merry, you know, mm. merry making. Mm. I think when we talk about human rights and democracy, we talk, it, it should go hand in hand with duties and responsibilities. Mm. We can't let our youth, because we've all been youth before, youthful mm. before, mm. we, the youth, have to be responsible as well. Mm. If you're given capital, how do you multiply that capital? Mm -hmm. There has to be a multiplication somewhere for you to achieve your desired goal of wealth, mm -hmm. of development, of skilling. Mm -hmm. What is happening with our youth that we have put in schools and they have resorted to drugs? Mm -hmm. How responsible are our youth who have, you know, they're always on, on they just don't want to work sometimes. And mm -hmm. we're not saying that all of them. Mm -hmm. I know that we have so many amazing youth who are very hardworking. Mm -hmm. But we can't say that all is lost and it is because of the government. Mm. We as a human <coughs> rights, uh, from the human rights lens, we are saying government has fallen short in some aspects mm. and raise it. We say do more. Mm. Uh, the statistics, uh, uh, the National Bureau of, uh, of Statistics came out, I think, the other day and was telling us people in, in Busoga region are the poorest. Can we up our act as mm. a state? to ensure that we do purposeful interventions for mm. people who are the lowest. In Karamoja, they mm. said Gulu and Busoga region. region. Mm. Can we support the youth there? Can we support the people there mm. purposefully where it is targeted interventions? But even though the state comes in, mm. you as the youth, you really have a responsibility to support yourself, I to agree. invest. Uh, uh, now, when Ms. it comes, yeah? Mr. Chindi, wh when we go back to the issue of uh, the ones in jail, what has the human rights done about these numbers of Ugandans who are in the election, arrested in the election? Um, what have you done about them? Some of them don't even have lawyers. A couple of them were, were, were arrested, you know, by bandwagon, yeah. and they're still in incarceration. What is the Uganda human rights doing about this? Because uh, the they have a right to, to be heard. The commission has uh, come out on uh, and spoken about, r right from the time when arrests were happening, mm -hmm. we came out and spoke about the arrests and said, if the state or the government is arresting people, mm. people have to a right to know where the, their relatives are. Because we don't want situations of incommunicado mm. detention. Mm. It means detention without communication. Mm. So people have to know where they are being detained mm. and they should be able to reach out to their relatives, mm. families and friends. Okay? Mm -hmm. They have a right to uh, freedom of, uh, you know, uh, the right to uh, uh, a fair hearing and they have a right to appear in court for a fair hearing. Mm. So we said if people have been arrested, produce them in court mm. for a fair hearing so that they follow the due process of the law mm. if they have committed any crimes. And uh, we visited families, we tracked them in the different prisons, and uh, uh, a number of them lodged complaints with us mm. that we have investigated. So we are anxiously waiting for um, new members to come in. Mm. Uh, they're yet to be sworn in, so we're waiting for, uh, for them to be sworn in. And we'll be happy to have our tribunals commence so that some of these cases can be had. Well, I'm, I'm grateful that there are already processes underway. Mr. Malekwa, again, um, Chigongo here said that a selective application of the SOPs in the wake of COVID-19. First of all, he thanked you for organizing an election during the pandemic, which you did incredibly great. But 
there was selective application of um, the SOPs. And um, he says, as youths, they don't feel that um, it was fair in one way or the other. And again, he goes ahead and says that our democracy is wanting at all levels. What's your comment about those? I'll start with the talk to lack of space for the youth. Yes, to freely I think express Uganda themselves. is one of the countries that have provided and affirmative action, mm -hmm. a lot of space for the youth. Mm. Look at, for example, we have the youth councils from village up to national, national level. level. Mm. And they've also made sure for each level of local government, there is representation. Mm -hmm. To parliament, there is representation mm. of the youth. Mm. And they have their own committees, plus a national committee. Now, all these are, you know, the government is creating space mm. for the youth to be able to express issues affecting them. Mm. So we have created as a government, actually many governments do not even have specific political positions mm. for youth. But Uganda, we are one of the few mm. that are able to have created yeah, this that. This is for the youth. And this is a recognition <coughs> that these people have a lot of energy. Mm. These people are intellect. These people can actually, they are not just future leaders, they are leaders today. Mm. And they've given them the space. And you have seen some of them are ministers mm. as youth. So I think there is a lot of that space. For the session during the application of, uh, you know, first when a pandemic, mm. minus pandemic, we should have enjoyed our usual, you know, conventional mm. campaign. Mm. Now, when it came to this uh, uh, situation, and all of us agree that it's not a normal situation. Yeah. And the way the, the, the virus spreads. So we agree that no, we are going to campaign. First, we said it's not even a scientific election. We are going to campaign. But let's our campaigns be in a controlled mode mm. so that we are able to mitigate mm. the spread of the virus. Now, some people would come out and say, we are not going to follow that. We are going to, to call rallies. Yeah. Now, if you say you are going to call rallies in a pandemic, mm. as electoral commission, what do you want us to do? To leave you call rallies? No, definitely. We had to restrain them. Mm. Yes. And also, during election, some people think the other laws of the country should be put aside. <laughs> and paused. And imposed. Yeah. Uh, it's like uh, they don't want even any law during campaign. Yes. No. Because even the election laws, they don't want to respect. Mm. We introduce the OPs because of the COVID, they don't want to respect. Mm. Even the other laws, they don't want to respect. But in election, it doesn't mean we should conduct ourselves unlawfully. No. Actually, a democracy is one of the is rule of law mm. that we should, if we have actually to achieve a lot of the benefits of democracy, we need to promote the rule of law. Mm. Short of that, it becomes difficult because I will infringe on you. Oh, yeah. And you know, now even when I infringe on you, if I'm arrested for infringing on you, they say they're infringing on my rights to arrest mm. me. What about the rights you're infringing the other on? Person. So I think we need to recognize all this. To balance the two. That if someone was arrested, of course, I don't promote arrest without presentation in mm. lawful courts. Mm. But we need to separate the arrests. What, what were the grounds for arrest? And the application of the of the SOPs, it's possible that there are individuals, law enforcers, w that could have enforced mm. for some and left for some. Mm. But for us as EC, there is no way. If you said you are going to 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 to, to call a rally, we would alert police and say no, that one should be stopped because mm. we don't want a rally. Because when you call a rally in the community, the people will come, Must and spread. it becomes a mm. fertile ground mm. for the spread of the COVID. Okay, that's a conversation. We're still having those ones joining us online. It's very interesting. I could feel your tweets. I'll tap them a little later. I'm just going to take a breather. The conversation is about the International Day of Democracy, which happens to be on the 15th of September 2021. But we are having these celebrations just in a few minutes. Let's take a break. We'll be back shortly. Conversation about the International Day of Democracy that is slated on 15th of September 2021. I'm Andrew Chamagiro. Now on Twitter here, an Aroni 
Irasras, you people and your names. Irasras he says that I think it's better if the young people contest for each and every political post and then the elderly should act as mentors to the youth. And then another person here says that um, thanks for the conversation, Chamagero. But then how do we talk about the over mentorship without giving us free spaces to learn what you have been mentored? And that goes to the human rights lady in studios. Um, uh, Ruth, that is a question for you, that um, you've over-mentored the youth in this day and age, but you're not giving them spaces to practice what you've mentored them into becoming. Um, <coughs> mentorship is good. Mm. It helps build, skill, build skills, knowledge, uh, and equip the mm. youth mm. who were all mentored True. by someone. Mm. And I think uh, mentorship, after mentorship, then people need to, d to be given opportunities. And I think the youth have opportunities to stand for political office. Mm. And uh, uh, at district level, mm. at MP level, members of parliament, mm. uh, even presidency, the, the <laughs> age is 18 <laughs> years. Where do you find that? So 18 years, yes. we can have, that means an, <laughs> an 18 year old president. It is no one laughable. Stops. Yeah, that's the law. Yeah. So uh, for the youth, they need to believe in themselves because mm. the opportunities are there. Mm. They should seize the opportunities. Because as mentors, because we are mentored, now we mentor the youth. Mm. Yeah. We tell them to look at the opportunities, to mm. seize the opportunity and never think if you're a 23 year old, you finish university, mm. look at the po opportunities and go for them. You'll be surprised at how much you can achieve or what you can get out there. Okay. The unfortunate bit is many times there's lack of confidence, mm. they don't believe in themselves, mm. there is the fearfulness. So actually they're saying, can you excuse us, Madame Ruth, mm. <laughs> and, and create way? Yeah. Yes, I would like be happy to. Like you leave office and another person oh, yes, can I would be happy to <laughs> uh, for, for a more energetic, uh, because the youth nice. are very energetic. Nice. When I was youthful, I we would work, I don't know how many hours straight. Mm. And as you grow older, you, you slow down. So yeah. it is okay. But it also doesn't mean mm. that as we age, we lose the brain. We That's have true. the experience, we have the expertise. Mm. It's also very good for us to work hand in hand, hand with hand, the youth, yeah. yes. It has to be a hybrid of sorts. Yes, yes, yes. That makes sense. Now, Mr. Mlekwa, the theme this year is a Stronger Together, Partnerships for Supporting and Achieving Democracy in a COVID-19 Environment. How important is this kind of theme to the Electoral Commission vis-a-vis, -vis, um, shortly after election, we had a conversation here with the chairman uh, of EC, and um, he was trying to um, reconcile the country. It was a conversation that took almost a week. Um, stronger Together and Partnerships for Supporting Achieving Democracy in the COVID-19 Environment what does it mean to the Electoral Commission in this context? Uh, thanks, Andy. Uh, look at any situation. Mm. Even take NTV. Mm. If Andrew decided to work alone, the producer alone, mm. that's why you have a producer. Oh, yes. You have a moderator. Mm. You have a president. The directors and all. Now, <coughs> the two of you, or several of you, mm. when you're working together, you are stronger. Yeah. And it's that that makes NTV. Mm -hmm. If you decided to go it alone, I, I'm not sure MTV would stand. No, now, I would In whatever situation, yes. in a democracy, even minus COVID, mm. unless we are together, mm. we cannot be strong. Now, in a, a situation of COVID, it's even more appealing mm. that we get together as stakeholders mm. in the democracy. Mm -hmm. If we have to achieve and support the achievements we shall have registered. So it's very relevant to us as electoral commission. Yeah. We are one of the few countries that managed in this COVID environment to conduct elections an, a successful free and fair election. Mm. Many countries postponed. But as Uganda, you remember even there were a lot of calls. I remember I came here and I was bombarded. <laughs> why, why, why are you yes, planning this? Why do you want this? It was a hard talk. <laughs> and we said, look, yeah. as a country, our laws, mm. and, and we're talking about rule of law, mm. the laws do not provide mm that if you have a situation of COVID, suspend elections. Yeah. There was a lot of pressure. I remember mm -hmm. even challenged it. Yeah. I said, whoever has power, let him postpone. But nobody in our Hold, constitution yeah. has Because power. the laws are clear. Because the laws are clear. Mm -hmm. The law directs 
Mm. Section uh, Article 62, direct, mm. direct to commission shall conduct mm. elections in this period. Mm. And we said the period is coming, and we had to advise government that the period is drawing closer and closer, and plan. there is no clause for escape. Mm. Why don't we put measures in place now, together with Mr. Verese, together with the media, mm. together with security? We put our heads together and said, mm. yes, I think these measures, if you put them in place, we can still have a successful election. Mm -hmm. Now, that was together. Mm. And we're looking at Uganda at that time. We're not copying from another country that had conducted You election. are customizing your own. Our, our own, mm. in the situation we had in the country, mm. the way the virus is spreading, it didn't start here that mm. we had developed. Yeah. But we came up and said, well, how can we have successful election? The experts are saying, the scientific experts are saying, <coughs> the only way to control this is to avoid person-to-person -person contact. Mm. How can we have the, the campaigns therefore? We avoid the use of mass Campaign. campaigns. Mm. If we can avoid that and make sure the messages reach the people, mm. either you put up a poster, you send the messages for those who phones. have uh, the, the mobile phones, mm. You come here and you you have uh, Andrew mm. facilitate you mm. to reach those who are able to be reached mm. on NTV and all these medias. Mm. Now, you see how you are bringing all these together stakeholders this. together. Mm. And if they didn't cooperate, there is no way we would have had a successful had election. election. So this theme is very, very valid in mm. our situation mm. because it was that partnership that enabled us, first and foremost, to achieve Mm. the conduct of the elections mm. and we need still that partnership to support us to achieve in mitigating the spread of the coronavirus that makes sense thank you so much mr Mlekwa. coming to chigongo you were burning we wanted to respond to 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 to, to uh, ruth sachindi um but I, I, i'll just grab you first before you respond to her together stronger and partnerships for supporting achieving democracy in a COVID-19 environment. How best can the youth work together and partner with the government agencies to achieve democracy now? We're with not playing EC. blame games now. Uh, stronger together yes. <coughs> was our theme during the celebration of the 75th anniversary mm. for the United Nations. Mm. We've United Nations has put up a strategic plan mm. through the Global Goals. Mm -hmm. And as the Youth Coalition for SDGs, we focus on Goal 17, which is partnerships. Mm. Yes. And we call upon all partners. Uh, the reason why we are here mm. with uh, the Electoral Commission, yes. Madame Sechindi <laughs> for Human Rights. <laughs> It is partnerships. It's partnerships. Yeah. This is where we are together. Mm. And this is a wonderful indicator mm. for yes. humanity and for development. Mm. We cannot achieve sustainable development in silos. True. Unless we come together, we work together. Exactly. Because we all have contributions that we make to societies. Mm. Uh, while Mr. Mlekwa is delivering an election, mm. I would love to contest in that election. Mm. Madam Sechindi would love to give guidance to that election. Mm. So that and I would like to report that election. Exactly. And I would like to report that election. <laughs> and inform. <laughs> much as you've yeah. been whipped. Yeah. Say very good. <laughs> 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 so, uh, uh, this is what brings us together. We believe in partnerships mm. to achieve all the other 16 goals. Mm. We cannot achieve SDG 16, which mm. is peace, justice, and strong institutions, mm. like Electoral Commission unless we are working together, unless mm. we come together mm. as a family and then we deliver sustainable Now, I, 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 as a youth, um, this is a very good conversation that actually it's me and you here talking. Mm. What do we need to do? There is a mindset, um, um, Madame Sechindi alluded to earlier on, that the youth want the Sechindis, the Mulekwas, to leave office, that we, the young ones, can get in that space and possibly drive the agenda, the youthful agenda. Um, what is our call to action as youths to make sure that we work together, that we create a hybrid that can work with that generation and our generation to move forward? Kwa um, First of all, mm. I would love all of you citizens and viewers to mm. embrace intergeneration partnerships. Mm. Mm. Uh, at my age, I have my father, mm. my grandmother, 
mm. my grandfather. Oh, you're lucky. I would wish them to still exist. Mm. We need to coexist. Yes. However, these older ages, mm. people of older generations, mm. close those to these young people. They assume that mm. these people are beggars, young people are beggars. Oh. So we want also to end this narrative of being beneficiaries. Rather, mm. we are stakeholders. The youth? Yes. Uh -huh. This is why we think we should be at all levels of decision making. Mm. We should step up, speak up. Mm. The Secretary General of the United Nations has encouraged us to push boundaries mm. at whatever limits within the law. Nice. And this is what young people are doing up at, uh, are delivering on the mm. front lines. Mm. So the older generations kindly free space to new ideas mm. so that they can flourish. They should we are give not the space. Pushing we are not pushing you away, mm. but give space to new ideas. These people are very rigid. Mm. They think what worked in 1980. The old ones? Yes, okay. what worked in 1970 mm. must apply now. Mm. It's not the case. Mm. The, even the factors of production have changed. Oh, yeah. Hmm? It used mm. to be learned what, what. They have changed. Now Digital space, website. Yes, <laughs> this is our generation. Yes. So mm. they must move to the speed. <coughs> mm. They must free space to new ideas. I think the biggest challenge we have mm. as a country, as lift very countries, mm. is being rigid with our own <laughs> knowledge. You've shoot so far. We should free space to new ideas. Okay. For example, we mm. have the internet. Mm. Mm? This internet is where we sell our products. Mm -hmm. It's where we, where, where an, our innovations flourish. Mm. If you cramp down internet, mm. if you switch off Facebook, not everybody abuses Facebook. A farmer, yes. Um, I happen to be a coffee farmer. Mm. I normally put up my coffee products mm. on, on the internet. Facebook on internet mm. so that I could get buyers. Mm. Before the closure of Facebook, I used to have good customers. Good, mm. good mm. customers. And from those custo customers, I could have referral. Mm. That is the purpose of Facebook, mm. internet, Twitter. Mm. Now, the challenge is these people are not understanding the trends. The old ones. Yes. The <laughs> post has shifted. Unless they shift <laughs> their thinking and adjust. Uh. And adjustment, uh, literally, they need a jump starter. You know when you have a car and has, mm. and has jammed on the road, mm -hmm. you need those wires to jump start. So it. you think the car is not moving anymore? So we need to jump start their brains. And but they have mentored you. That's what she said. She said you've been mentored by them. So how can someone who has mentored mm. you become all of a sudden? There, no. is a, there is a lot of luck. Mentorship is lacking, honestly. In this country? In this country. Mm. Not every young person has had an... I've been mentored mm. um, under mentorship mm. by some people, but I looked for them. They never looked for me. Wow. To be mentored. But still, yeah. I was purported to be a beggar. I'm not a beggar. <laughs> I Just want us to exchange ideas. I want these and ideas. And we appreciate all, 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 all generations. Now, the problem with also the, with the older generations, mm. they assume these people want our space. Mm -hmm. And also, I think we should inculcate a culture mm -hmm. across of retire retirement. Mm. People do not want to retire in public service. Mm -hmm. People do not want to retire in civil service. Mm. So this goes, this refusal of retirement mm. has entrenched on your rights to come through. <laughs> <laughs> Even at the top, uh -huh. I think this is the problem that we have. They fear change. What next? Mm. I think I call upon the Uganda Retirement Benefits and NSSF. Mm. Kindly prepare these people to retire safely so that mm. they free space to the new ideas, <laughs> they free space to the young generations <laughs> so that they can exhibit their innovations, they can flourish. Okay. However, we still need to coexist. Mm. Let us coexist. Okay. There's no problem in coexistence. This, this, this brings me back to you, Mr. Mlekwa. I. I at least I've worked with you before and your mind is so open-minded, the same applies to uh, Sechindi here. Um, you love to tap into our minds and see where we are headed and you guide us on that. Uh, but what Robert is saying here, I could see you are burning to respond to it. <laughs> you, in one way you were shocked and they said you're like, really? <laughs> this is the kind of generation we have. How are we going to work stronger together with this kind of generation? I think for us as EC, mm. 
<coughs> we are promoting the youth theatre. Because when you look at even the adverts we put up for yeah. jobs, mm. it's mainly, we even put a cap. Yeah. Not above 35 years. Exactly. Yeah. Now, th that is creating space. Space. Mm. And serious. Mm. And if you look at most of our polling officials, mm. it's those. They're young. They're young. Even when you're uh, recruiting the permanent staff, it's mm. those. So, because we know, and the, the kind of work mm. we do, mm. it needs a lot of the young people. Mm. For example, you're going to be at the polling station. You leave home at five in the morning, mm. and you may go back at midnight. Yeah. Now, if you are in the advanced ages, you are already it, tired. It, it, it's and it's fatigued. quite tough. Mm. It's quite tough. Mm. So we recognize that that the young people have that, <coughs> and we have brought them on board. Mm. And I'm sure if you look at the groups of the people who work for us, mm. the the average is about that. Oh yeah. And. B because of the, the, the potential they have mm. and the, the resilience compared to, to the other to, people. To, to, to but I think there's still a lot that needs to be done mm. in terms of this. Yes, there are also are some areas where some young people think the, the older people should mm. actually get out. Because if you look at public service, when people clock 60, they retire. Mm. Yeah, they're retiring. And the the, 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 the the payroll system now, mm. immediately you are 60, automatically mm. it removes yes. you from the payroll. Mm. You must retire. Mm. There is no way out. Situa there, uh, there are a few cases mm. where government may find that, yes, this one has clocked 60, and maybe you heard of recently when I think the president was complaining, mm. the police, of course, someone clocked 60 and he had specific and I think the only one who had that skill, mm. but he was retired, mm. rightly. But I think they could have identified that and given him a contract. And they do that, and they give you a short Specified contract mm. just because of the specific. Otherwise, to enable you to nurture another person. Exactly. Mm. But <coughs> public service, the early six day, you you should retire. Mm. There is no because if automatically the payroll removes you. Once you click say the next month, you, you can't appear on the payroll. <laughs> <laughs> so I totally agree. Yeah, and th those have been created to make mm. sure people can go home and retire. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Chindi, uh, just a minute. Uh, I'll get back to you, Robert, a bit later. You wanted to respond to that, Mr. Chindi? Yes, yes. Mm. Uh, you see, Robert mm. uh, raises a very interesting stuff and issues. Mm. And uh, as a youth, Robert, I don't know how many years you still have to say as a youth. <laughs> yes, I can <laughs> see that. <laughs> but it's still vibrant. So, yeah, very soon you're joining me. Mm. So, um, but when we are youth, it's important to acknowledge mm. and respect mm. the people above us. Yeah, true. So there are things out of courtesy and respect, because we need a respectful society. Mm. You want to be respected, respect your elders. True. And so when you say things like they need to be jump-started, <laughs> you know, it is rather rude. Yeah. What happened, what happened to civility? Mm. We want our younger generation mm. to be focused. Mm. So when you insult the leaders, we wonder what kind of leader you will be when, when you get there. Mm. So let's try to be respectful of the people who came before us. Mm. Maybe they created space for you. Mm. You said you were nurtured, or you are nurtured, mm. so have some respect. But mm. be that as it may, um, I will speak to the Uganda Human Rights Commission. Yeah. 80 percent, I think I could even say 90, is below the age of 35. Yeah, true. And uh, if, you s if, you, if you look at uh, uh, some of us became directors pretty young mm. in our 20s. Mm. So maybe you've been, s you've been seeing some of us around for the longest <laughs> while, and you believe we are... <laughs> You've been uh, here for 40 we years. We are clocking 100 <laughs> years. <laughs> Unfortunately, not. Yeah. So, uh, Robert, um, <coughs> I think there are many opportunities for the youth. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, as a country and the world over, we have embraced uh, their wisdom, we've embraced their zeal, their energy, mm -hmm. because they have a lot to offer. And no one has called the youth beggars, unless you want to be called that. Mm. Because I was never called a beggar. Mm. And I don't think I would mm. call another beggar. But uh, we need to, as the youth, we need to encourage our youth to seize the opportunities yeah. that are out there. And also, 
um, so that you don't you don't treat yourself as beggars. Mm. Use the opportunity. Don't beg, and show that you are deserving. The internet came from the youth, mm. and everyone is thriving on the internet. Mm. Social media from the youth, mm. and we are all using social media. And we're happy promotions now. You've been talking about your coffee mm. and all that so through social media. And we've all embraced it. Mm. And I think the youth have a lot to offer. No one has ignored them. Mm. The question is, do they seize the opportunity? Do they see opportunities where they seems like, seem like none? Mm. And I think we did that. When you're mentoring, Robert, mm. you'll be telling the youth to look at the opportunities out there, to be job creators, mm to uh, inspire others and start something new. That's what we want for our youth. Okay. Mr. Malekwa, given that you're winding up this conversation yeah. because of time, how are we celebrating the International Day of Democracy? Uh, thank you, Andrew. Mm. Of course, in a COVID situation, mm. last year and the other year, we had the uh, more visible celebration yes. because of the, we were out of this situation. Mm. For this year, we have taken it in compliance with SOPs. The COVID guidelines. We are going to have this kind of uh, celebration. Okay. Mm. Like we are here today. Mm. Virtually. Virtually, we are discussing. Mm. Uh, I'm sure tomorrow, the chairperson of the commission mm. will be engaged by media yeah. to send out messages and to call on everybody. Mm. And uh, I don't want this to be looked at as an electoral commission function. Yeah. Mm for all institutions mm. because the call by the united nations is to all governments and to all democratic institutions yes now if you look at the institutions involved in democracy even political parties yeah true civil society uh and now the youth mm. the women the person with disabilities the other person in the case of uganda yeah the uh, the, the, the groups under affirmative action all these are democratic institutions Mm. The accountability institutions are all democratic institutions. The law enforcement organizations, all these should be, you know, part of the part of this yeah. and could organize mm. uh, similar activities mm. to commemorate this day. Because we are looking at, as a country, we have achieved a lot. Mm. Now, it's because the elections, uh, by their nature, they can paralyze all the other things. True. And I think uh, Robert needs to agree. Mm. Yes, I think we was referring for the example, internet was switched off. Mm. But we also agree that if someone is breaking a law, should be stopped. Mm -hmm. If the internet is going to be used to flare the population mm. for a limited time, it can be switched off to mm. safeguard the spirit of the country. Mm. Kenya, because of elections, people started, which what started like a, a joke, the tribal conversation. Layered up the whole country and the yeah. country burnt up. Mm. I, I don't think we would want to go there as a country. No, yeah. So if it is really for security and for a limited time or period, personally, I was affected also because mm. we also know Facebook and so on. Mm. But why was it done? Now, for us, knowing the dynamics of uh, the internet mm. as a commission, we developed our own safe mode mm. for transmission of results the data mm. because we see how in uganda the internet was being used mm. people pass whatsapp mm. now when you read a message on whatsapp you don't know whether it's uh, true or not you're still hanging you don't even <laughs> believe in it oh yes yeah but it's now like fun mm. but yet it's a serious mode of communication mm. people reaching each other because mm. we communicate in the past if i lost somebody it would take a lot of pain to inform people in the village when I was growing up, we would be sent, mm. you ride a bicycle the whole day, dropping cheats. Yeah. 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 Now, with the bulk message, send once. In, in second, everybody has known. Mm. So, how can we run away from such? You know, I, it's very important. Mm. But I need, as we commemorate this, mm. to remember the achievement as a country mm. in the area of democracy and that to sustain these achievements. Mm. And to even gain more, we need, as the theme goes, mm. to get together and partnerships. And the earlier we realize the that better. indeed we need all the stakeholders in the electoral process. Mm. We have been, last week and this week, consulting 
the stakeholders at district level, how, in their view, did they see the organization of, of the, the election? Of the election? Mm. Now, we are doing this so that we get views. Where we went short, yeah. how do we improve? Mm -hmm. Where we did well, also, how is it possible to improve? Mm. Yeah, we could have done well, but there's still room for to improvement. Mm. So we are gathering this from, and we had a consultant, mm. so that he compiles an independent report. We didn't want to go there. Mm. And all this because we realized that electoral commission alone cannot achieve a free and fair election. So wow. we call upon all stakeholders mm. in this. Really, whenever we call on them mm. to come, and mm. for us, staking is a critical concept in our work. Every other day we're talking of stakeholders. Mm. Before we begin an activity, we invite mm. them. Mm. We do what we invite them because we know we cannot succeed on our own. Mm. So we really want to embrace that, and we pledge as commission to continue. Mm involving all stakeholders at all levels. Because mm. you can imagine, we allowed people at the polling stations. Of course, they were not happy with the prohibition of a camera at the polling station. Yeah. But the law also, the, the law says we must preserve mm. the, the, the secrecy and mm. sanctity of the election. Mm. Now, if you allow the camera, they will photograph uh, who you've ticked. Somebody ticking mm. Mm. now. So wh where is the, the, the secrecy? Oh, yeah. And we are also we ensure that every vote is equal. Mm. Whether you are poor, whether you are rich, yeah. whether you are old, whether you are young, you turned up and you are allowed to vote. Nobody can stop anybody on the register to vote. Oh. And nobody is allowed to cast more than one vote. Okay. Now, all these are, we're able, even in the COVID environment, mm. we ensure that as a country, we're able to enjoy the principles and achievements mm -hmm. and a democracy. Well, that is a conversation you've had. That is uh, Mr. Leonardo Mulekwa, the Director of Operations from the Electoral Commission. And we had Ruth Sechindi, uh, Director of Monitoring and Inspection from the Uganda Human Rights Commission. And uh, Chigongo Robert, Sustainable Development Catalyst, the Youth Coalition for the SDGs. Those of you who have been online, I've been seeing a couple of you dropping your tweets here. I just can't thank you enough. I really want to thank you. Thank you so, so much. Um, I saw Aaron Iris. Thanks for the message. Uh, then Brian. Um, Brian Kakoburian uh, says that until EC becomes independent, that's when we will have democracy. Now I know my role. Thank you so much for your tweets. Those who have been a part of the conversation, I really want to thank you so, so much. Um, just to mention, Councillor Chikomeko Julius, I've seen you here. Then we have uh, Expediter Setaba. Uh, Kiza Isma, then Kavan Edson, thank you so much. And all those who have been a part of this conversation beyond Uganda, listen, as we celebrate the International Day of Democracy, ask yourself, what have you done to see that democracy prevails in your community, in your villages, in your churches, in your mosques, in your homes, and at a national level? Have you played your role before we play the blame games? Can we be a part of the bigger conversation actively? I'm Andrew Chamagero. Good afternoon.